what have you guys learned through parenthood and through motherhood, you know, that has challenged you both, you know, maybe something that you didn't know about yourself and it's brought to the forefront. It's like, okay, let me check myself a little bit. Or, you know, something that you learned about yourself that has like, oh, you know what, I didn't know I had this good, good quality about myself. Yeah, my kids are my, <laughs> I mean, literally, I'm learning every day. They're my biggest teachers. Yeah. Um, so my oldest is 13. Um, my daughter, my only daughter is uh, eight, and then my youngest um, is six. And so each of them, yeah, I mean, I don't know. They, I, <laughs> they each have taught me something different about myself. Like with my daughter, it's like I'm looking at myself. It's like I have to pause sometimes in the way I interact with her because... I know how strong she is because I know how strong I am, mm -hmm. but she needs me in a different way. She needs me to look at her. She needs me to, to pause and like to, she's like, like, I catch her looking at me and watching my every movement. And I'm like, oh God, like, what am I saying to myself? What am I doing? What am I, you know, because there's eyes on me. And so that, I get that from her. My boys challenge me to be myself, mm -hmm. to speak my truth. Mm -hmm. um, well, she, she does too, but. Yeah, every day, <laughs> literally, I'm in the trenches of learning, like, beyond the world. Like, they are my teachers. <laughs> yeah. They are. Um, and, you know, plus we, we deal with a lot of sensory needs, all of my kids, but one is diagnosed on the spectrum, my youngest, and so dealing with the challenges of navigating a world that's not set up for him uh, has, has taught me to, to, you know, well, I'm learning how to speak up for him, how to change, you know, dynamics so that he is supported in, in environments because the world is not built for him at all. And so how can I, um, how can I move, move it, <laughs> move things, move uh, things and speak for him? And because he's also nonverbal for the most part, he's saying more words, but he has a presence though. Mm -hmm. And he's taught me that you don't have to speak to have a presence. That's right. Mm -hmm. you, you take up space and you have big energy and you you deserve because you're here. Yeah. And um yeah, my oldest um yeah, he's he was my first. He made me a mother and he's still to this day this morning <laughs> still making me a mother, you know, making sure that I am standing strong for him. Mhm. Mm so yeah, it's motherhood is the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> I empathize with mom so much. I do, man. I do, man. My mom used to tell me all the time, listen, being a parent is hard work, you know, mm -hmm. and she would echo it all the time. It is hard. Yes. There is no handbook. There is no manuscript. There is no, you know, you're just trying your, your best to do what you, what you know. And, you know, one, one thing that I've learned about parenthood, especially, you know, my empathy for mothers is that, um, we never really know what people have gone through, you know, yeah. before we even got here. Right. <laughs> you don't know I what know. people are carrying in their bodies. You don't know what type of experiences people have been through that have impacted how they how they parent, how they see things, how they make this. You know, we don't have any of that information, you know. So that, yeah. yes, I empathize yeah. with y'all. What about you? Um, I'm sorry. I was like this little squirrel was just like looking at me out there. <laughs> um, Squirrel is like symbolic for like something good. I can't think of what yeah, it is, but you just pause and yeah. just like looking in the window. <laughs> motherhood for me, motherhood for me. I gotta pause to think of it because it's so much. Like it's my everyday life right now, and I was so young that I feel like I've always been a mother. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was eighteen, and it's just my oldest. She knows me. She grew up with me. You know, she's twenty one. She's an artist. She just she's my um, Indigo child, mm. you know. Uh, and then I have Dylan, who's eight, about to be eight. Her birthday's in a week or so. Week, week two weeks. I better yeah. get to it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Dylan, so basically, all of my children, they almost have seeds of me in them. Mm -hmm. And so, like, Dylan has a specific, she's very curious to the point where she'll get herself in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I was always curious. So it's almost like, they force you to deal with self in order to parent well. It's so triggering. Right? Like it's so triggering. You, in order to parent well, you have to get yourself together. Jeez. So <laughs> every day I'm check they're checking me. And That's I right. let my kids be vocal and mm -hmm. some parents, you know, they have their boundaries on that. I think it's important to know all of your child. So I wanna hear mm -hmm. the other side yeah. of what that would look like if I'm not in the room, you yeah. know, and they're at school or, you know, how are you thinking? Like, I like to get into my kids' psyche and really right. get to know them on that level. I enjoy being a parent, mm -hmm. to be honest. 
I think being a parent, um, it just makes me a better person. It grounds me. It slows me down because I'm a, yeah. I'm a generator, so I'm always like going and moving. But lately, I've been really, and also from the pandemic, just really dropping into my life choices, and it hasn't been easy. Again, there's a lot of grief with like, all right, the old Deja is, but it's all still here. Yeah. It's all still here. Yeah. So yeah, motherhood is is a life study. 